Hi, I'm Meredith Muller, and today we're going to be talking about option contracts and merchant's firm offers. First thing you need to know is the general rule. The general rule is with contract formation, um, of course we know that contract formation requires mutual assent plus consideration and absence of defenses, and mutual assent is achieved through the process of offer and acceptance. Okay? The general rule here that I want you to, to take to heart is that offers can be revoked at any time before acceptance. That's the general rule. Now there are exceptions and we're going to talk about uh, promises to keep the offer open. So a promise to keep the offer open is called an option contract. And we treat option contracts differently at common law and under the UCC. Of course we do. So the reason I'm meeting with you today is because I want to walk you through the elements of a, uh, an option contract, both at common law and under the UCC, so that you know uh, whether the offeror still has the power to revoke his offer prior to acceptance under certain circumstances. So let's go ahead and talk about options at common law. Again, an option exists when the offeror promises to keep the offer open for a certain amount of time. Okay, um, yeah, I'll hold this open for you until next week. Um, sure, you can let me know next Saturday. Um, that kind of thing. The offeror promises to keep the offer open for a certain amount of time. And the effect of making this promise to keep the offer open for a certain amount of time is that the offer becomes firm. It's a firm offer. Okay, that means that the offeror cannot terminate the offer, can't revoke the offer um, until the time for acceptance has passed. Now, the difference between common law and the UCC, if we're dealing with common law services, um, real estate, anything like that, such a promise, an option contract, this promise to hold the offer open is only going to be enforceable if it's supported by separate consideration. What do I mean by separate consideration? I mean um, a payment, um, performance, or a promise to pay in the future. Um, we have to support our promise to hold the offer open with separate consideration, separate from the consideration in the original contract. Okay, so if um, I um, offer to uh, paint your house for $1,000, and um, I promise to keep my offer open until Saturday. That offer is only going to keep the, uh, my promise to keep the offer only open is only going to be enforceable if we pay separate consideration for it. Okay, so the thousand dollars is consideration for me painting your house, painting services in, in exchange for money. Okay, so that's regular old consideration. But we have to have separate consideration to support my promise to keep the offer open in order to make that promise enforceable. Okay, so if um, if you give me fifty dollars to hold the offer open, then we have consideration there, and I cannot revoke my offer until um, I tell you that until the time I tell you that um, you have to make up your mind by. So if I have to say, um, yeah, I'll keep it open until Saturday, you hand me fifty dollars. Um, I cannot revoke my offer until Saturday. Okay, so that's how that works. At common law, your, your promise to keep an offer open has to be supported by, cons by separate consideration. So things to look out for. Okay, when we, when we like to test this, look for situations where your consideration might be nominal. Hey, we're only going to give you a dollar. Like maybe we've got a multi-million dollar contract, and I say, okay, you know, let me let me know by, um, you know, July thirtieth, and um, and we exchange a dollar in exchange for that promise to keep the the promise open. Okay, that's not necessarily going to mean that um, our option contract is going to fail because our consideration can be nominal. Okay. Um, Usually courts don't inquire into the adequacy of consideration. Okay, nominal consideration um, may, be a, um, may be enough here to support holding that promise open. Okay, also, if it's a written contract, here's, here's something that we like to trick you up on. The consideration doesn't actually have to be an exchange. So 
instead of um, you handing me $50 to keep my offer open to, to uh, paint your house, um, we just put it on a piece of paper and we say that you promised to pay me $50 in exchange for my promise to keep the offer open, even though we actually never give the uh, $50. No $50 is ever exchanged um, as long as it's recited in the writing. Okay, so we've got a writing in which we have a recital of consideration. That's enough, even if no consideration is actually exchanged. So what I want you to know here is that at common law, a think of it as a separate agreement. You've got your original contract for whatever it is you're agreeing for, painting houses, um, babysitting, um, dog walking, whatever it happens to be, um, the sale of real estate, whatever. Um, just know that it has to be uh, supported by consideration in order to be enforceable. I promise to keep that or offer open. Okay, the option has to be supported by separate consideration. It's a separate agreement. Okay, think of them. Think of them as two separate contracts: the actual contract and the contract that promises to keep the offer open. Both need to have consideration in order to be enforceable. Okay, so let's take this on to the um, to the restatement. What does the second restatement say? And this is section 87, and it says that an offer is binding as an option contract if A, it's in writing and signed by the offeror, recites purported consider consideration for making the offer, and proposes an exchange on fair terms within a reasonable time. So this is what I just had mentioned about a simple uh, recital of consideration is enough. Okay, if it's in, if it's in writing, um, even if the consideration is not exchanged, that's A. Okay, um, it's also going to be binding as an option contract if it's made irrevocable by statute. Okay, so perhaps we have some language, uh, some, some statutory language that says, you know, this, this, this can't be revoked. Um, perhaps it's a sale of real estate wherein you have a, a certain time to, um, to secure financing or something. I don't know, maybe we have a statute that makes it irrevocable. Um, number two is when we have um, an offer which the offeror should reasonably expect to induce action or forbearance, okay, in other words, a justifiable reliance, um, on the part of the offeree before acceptance, and which does induce such action or forbearance. That's going to be binding as an option contract in order to avoid injustice. So this is kind of like uh, your doctrine of promissory estoppel. Okay, we're looking at justifiable reliance here. So we have a, a, uh, a binding option contract if it's... Um, supported by consideration, okay, um, or if it's in writing and um, we recite consideration even if none is exchanged, or if the offer is made irrevocable by statute, or if we have um, justifiable, justifiable reliance and we need um, to keep the offer open in order to avoid injustice. So let's check ourselves. All right, take what we've just learned and pretend that we've got um, on Monday, Mary runs into Sally and she says, hey Sally, I'll pay you $20 an hour to babysit my children on Saturday night. And uh, Sally says, you know what, that sounds great. I gotta check my calendar to see if I'm busy. Uh, so can, can I let you know on Wednesday? And Mary agrees to hold her offer open until Wednesday. If Mary then tries to revoke her offer on Tuesday, is her revocation valid? Well, what did we just learn? We learned that this is an option contract. She's promising to keep the offer open until Wednesday. Okay, so we've got an expressed interest to keep the offer open. Okay, um, is it supported by consideration? Okay, well, is this common law or is this UCC? Well, it's babysitting, so it's a common law contract. We know common law um, option contracts have to be supported by consideration in order to be valid. So we look to see if it is. It doesn't appear to be. I don't see any money exchanging hands here. It just says Mary agreed to hold her offer open until Wednesday. Okay, there's no separate consideration there, so it doesn't appear to be valid. But just in case, is there a statute that would make it irrevocable? I don't see anything there. Um, is there any um, justifiable reliance that, that we see? Um, I don't see any, and there's no writing. So the simple recital of consideration isn't going to be enough either. So if Mary tries to revoke her offer on Tuesday, her revocation is going to be valid because her promise 
to hold the offer open is not supported by consideration. This is a common law contract. Under common law, consideration is required to hold the offer open. Okay, so let's change the facts a little bit. And let's say that um, Sally said she had to check her calendar to see if she was busy and asked Mary if she would hold the offer open until Wednesday. Mary agrees and they write it down on a, um, on a piece of paper and say, um, in exchange for me taking you out for ice cream um, tomorrow, you promise to keep the offer open until Wednesday. Okay, is that um, enough to keep Mary from revoking her offer on Tuesday? In this situation, it is. We have a promise to hold the offer open, okay, and we have consideration. Um, even if, even though it hasn't been exchanged, um, we've got a a promise to uh, exchange. She's going to take her out for ice cream, okay, and it's in writing. So even if she doesn't take her out for ice cream, even if the no consideration is ever exchanged, it's recited in the consideration is recited in the writing. That's enough. Okay, so we are going to force Mary to hold her offer open until when until Wednesday. If she tries to revoke on Tuesday, that revocation is going to be invalid. See how that works? Um, same thing can be done for um, you know justifiable reliance. Um, put a statute in there, all that kind of stuff. The number one key is to just look out for um, consideration. You have to have it in a common law contract, and look out for situations where the recital of consideration might be enough. Okay, so moving along, let's talk about the UCC. What's different about the UCC? Well, mainly, the UCC does not require consideration to hold an offer open. Um, if you've got an offer by a merchant to buy or sell goods in a sign writing. Now, I know that um, I, I've mentioned this before. You've probably uh, encountered this in your studies somewhere along the way. But... Um, Again, for those that may not have heard me say this before, the UCC applies to all sale of goods. The sale of goods. Anytime you have goods, whether you're a merchant or not, whether you're my next door neighbor or Home Depot, um, if you're selling goods, the UCC applies. A lot of students mess this up and think that um, the UCC only applies to merchants. The fact of the matter is, is that certain provisions of the UCC apply to merchants. A UCC applies to all contracts for the sale of goods, and then certain provisions apply only to merchants. UCC 2205 happens to be one of them. Okay, that's our merchant's firm offer rule. So an offer by a merchant to buy or sell goods in a signed writing, which by its terms gives the assurance that it's going to be held open, is not revocable for lack of consideration during the time stated or if no time is stated for a reasonable time, but in no event may such period of irrevocability exceed three months, but any such term of assurance on a form supplied by the offeree must be separately signed by the offeror. Blech. That's a mouthful. Let's separate that into some elements here. Okay, what do you need? If you're looking to see if a merchant has made a firm offer, in other words, a merchant's offer to keep their offer open, okay, to see if that is binding to see if it's a merchant's firm offer to see if the merchant must hold his offer open as promised we look for these three things we look for number one the merchant offeror expresses his intent that the offer will not be revoked number two it has to be in writing okay that's a big one and number three it actually has to be signed by the merchant Okay, so we've got um, we've got a promise an expressed written promise to keep the offer open in writing signed by the merchant. That's enough. No consideration is required. Not even a recital. We don't even have to write consideration into the, uh, into the contract like we did with Mary and Sally over there. Okay, it's going to be merchants from offer and the offeror loses the power of termination. He cannot revoke the, uh, the offer um, if it's held open um, for either the time stated or if no time is stated for a reasonable time, but no longer than three months. So um, with a lot of students get mixed up with the three month rule. So um, usually you've got it, you know, I'll, I'll let this stay open until July 5th. I'll let this stay open, you know, until Saturday. You, could, you have until, um, you know, you have two weeks to decide. Whatever it is stated is the period of irre irre irrevocability, okay? Um, 
if there is no um, period stated um, in the offer to keep the offer open, then the offer can be revoked after a reasonable time. Okay, but if we do express a period, it's not going to exceed three months. Okay, and um, if nothing is said, it's got to be a reasonable time. Okay, so let's check ourselves on this one, right? Let's say that on May 15th, Mary is a dealer um, of turnip twirlers, okay? And she offered in a signed instrument, signed document, to sell a turnip twirler to Bill for $500, okay? Um, naturally, in my mind, statute of frauds is, is um, um, peeking out there. Uh, we've got sale of goods for $500. Does that have to be in writing in, in order to be enforceable? It's in writing, but that's a different issue altogether. We'll talk about that later. Okay, for now, let's just talk about whether or not um, we have a, a, a binding uh, merchant's firm offer here. Okay, so by the terms of the offer, Bill was given until June 25th to accept the offer. Okay, May, 20, May 15th to June 25th is not longer than three months. Okay, so we might have a merchant's firm offer here. Um, it's in a signed instrument. Okay, so it's signed. Um, in, the ter in the terms, Bill intends to leave it open until June 25th. And then on June 15th, Bill received a writing from Mary uh, revoking the offer. Okay. On June 20th, um, and then on June uh, 20th, Bill wrote, wrote Mary, I hereby accept your offer of May 15th. So the question now is, do Bill and Mary have an enforceable contract? Wow. Okay, well, let's, let's break this apart. Let's first see if our merchant's firm offer is actually a merchant's firm offer. Well, what are our requirements? Again, we have to have an express intention that the offer will not be revoked. Okay, under the facts that I just gave you, we said that um, by the terms of the offer, Bill was given until June 25th to accept. Okay, so we have an, an expressed intention that the offer would not be revoked until June 25th. Is it in writing? Yes. It's an assigned, it's assigned instruments. That's what it says. Okay. Um, is it, uh, is it signed by the merchant? Well, um, it says marry an assigned instrument to sell a turnip twirler. So that means it's signed. So therefore we have a merchant firm offer and Mary must keep that offer open until June 25th. But what happened? Well, June 15th, which is before June 25th, um, Bill received a writing from Mary revoking the offer. So Mary revoked the offer on June 15th, even though she said that she would keep it open until June 25th. Okay. And then um, on June 20th, five days after Mary has revoked her offer, Bill wrote to Mary and says, I hereby, hereby accept your offer of May 15th. Well, it's not June 25th yet. Okay, he's still got five more days to accept because even though this offer was not supported by consideration, it's a merchant's confirm offer under the UCC in which consideration is not required. Therefore, Mary has to keep the offer open until June 25th and her attempt to revoke it on June 15th was um, fails okay, because she can't revoke it. She's not allowed to revoke it. Uh, under merchant's firm offer rule until the 25th. So Bill can accept that offer that Mary attempted to revoke on June 20th. So they do have a valid and enforceable contract. And that, my friends, is how uh, merchant's firm offer works under the UCC. Uh, this one, it, it, it looks confusing on its face, but once you get into, into practicing it a little bit more, do some... Um, do some practice multiple choice and some, some um, essay examples. And I think that you'll find this one to be a pretty easy one to master. Good luck, and I'll see you next time.